In this section, you will learn about subqueries, which is a feature of SQL that is very useful and can be very powerful. So, what is a subquery? A subquery is a select statement that is included or nested within another SQL statement, which can be another select or an insert, update or delete, and they are always enclosed within parentheses. In some cases, subqueries are executed prior to the execution of the main statement where they are nested in, and sometimes they are executed once for every row in the potential result set of the main query. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. Take a look at this query. The subquery is the select statement you see here, which, as I mentioned before, is enclosed in parentheses. And the statement with this subquery is nested in is usually called the main query or the main statement. In this case, the subquery is executed once at the very beginning, and once the results are ready, it is used to evaluate the condition in the where clause of the main query. So, what does this subquery return? So once the result is ready, the main query is executed like this. Now, when I have a subquery like this one, whose result is going to be compared in the main statement by using an equality operator, or a less than or greater than or other similar comparison operator, it must return only one column and only one row. Or in other words, it must return a single value. This type of subquery is usually called a scalar subquery. Now, let's look at another example. Take a look at this. This subquery returns only one column, but it can return more than one row. You probably remember that I mentioned in the operator section that the in operator could also be used with a subquery, instead of having to provide the list of expressions at the same time. So this is the great thing about using subqueries this way. You don't have to provide a static list of expressions. Instead, you can provide a subquery which will provide the list of values to be used in the evaluation at runtime. In this case, the subquery is executed once at the very beginning as well, and its results are kept in memory to be used when evaluating the condition in the main queries where condition. There is a situation that involves the use of subqueries like in the previous example, which can give you incorrect results and could drive you crazy when trying to figure out why it doesn't work the way you want. Pause the video for a moment and go to the resources section to copy the query that is listed as statement number one in the resource file. This time you just have to copy the query that is included in the file, even if you are using live SQL. Okay, now please run the query you copied from the script. How many rows did you get? Now, write a query to list all of the rows in the department table and take a look at the results.
How many rows do you see with a monthly budget that is greater than 25,000? So, if only information technology has a monthly budget greater than 25,000, why are you getting all of the employees in the previous query? I don't know either. Now copy the subquery and run it as a standalone statement. Go ahead, pause the video for a moment and run it. What happened? Pretty weird, don't you think? So this is the tip. When writing statements that involve subqueries, make sure to test the subqueries individually whenever possible, especially when you are getting incorrect results without an apparent reason. Now, let's take a look at another type of subquery. Again, since we are using a less than operator here, the subquery must return only one row and only one column. But there is something different with this subquery. Look at the word clause. This condition compares the department ID to this thing here. But what is this? D is the alias I assign to the department table in the main query. So this condition is comparing the department ID in the employee table to the ID column in the department table. And this has two consequences for us. First, we cannot test this subquery as a standalone statement. It will give us an error. And second, since this subquery is related to one row in the potential result set from the main query, it cannot be executed only once at the beginning it needs to be executed once for each row in the list of rows that the main query is evaluating to provide its final result. Since this subquery is related to the main query by means of this condition, this type of subquery is called a correlated subquery. And correlated subqueries are usually less efficient than the previous type of subqueries we saw, which are usually called non-correlated subqueries. In these examples, I have put the subqueries in the WHERE clause of the main query, but they can also appear in other parts of the SELECT statement, such as in the SELECT list, as in this example. As you can see here, this is a correlated subquery too. And as always, it is enclosed in parentheses. To conclude this lesson, let me show you another example. I have a query here that I want to show you. There are two things that I want to bring to your attention here. The first one is this WHERE clause. As you can see, I'm using the IN operator, but I have two columns here, and in consequence, my subquery returns two columns as well. 
so you can have any number of expressions in this part of the condition, but your subquery must return the same number of columns, otherwise you will get an error. And the second thing I wanted to show you is that I have another subquery here, inside of this subquery, which is inside of the main query. So this is what is called nested subqueries. And Oracle allows you to have a big number of levels when nesting subqueries. You can nest up to 255 levels of subqueries in the word clause. Yeah, the number is ridiculous. And one final thing I haven't mentioned so far. When you have subqueries like these ones, they cannot have an order by clause. If you add an order by clause to a subquery like this one, you will get an error. Okay, time for your task. See you later. Hey, you are back. Was it easy? Good. Now let's move to the next lecture, where we are going to look at another type of subquery. See you there.